top five books of 2023 so far, according to me and my wife. <laughs> so we made this video around six months ago for our favorite books of last year, and now we're doing one at the midway point of 2023. And who knows, we might do one again at the end of the year. So I'll go first, and on fifth spot for me is The Martian by Andy Weir. I mean, this is an absolute classic, and probably most of you thought I had read this book a long time ago, but if you don't know already, then Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir is one of my favorite, if not my favorite sci-fi books of all time, and a lot of people said that The Martian is just as good, or even better, and I finally read it, and I really, really enjoyed it. I think the most surprising thing about the whole book is that most of the book takes place following a man that is totally alone in space, and he's able to make the book engaging. Like, I just don't understand how Andy Weir was able to make a man just writing log entries totally alone, that exciting and fun and entertaining and riveting, but he just pulls it off and it's standalone, it's relatively short, and yeah, I just overall had a really, really great time, so I definitely understand why so many people love it, and I would definitely recommend it. There's also a film with Matt Damon. There is a great film with Matt Damon. It's a good film. Yeah, it's very good. We should probably watch it. <laughs> have, you, have you not seen it? Yeah, we should re-watch it. Re <laughs> Fifth spot, um, book 12 of Wheel of Time. Um, I recently finished the whole series. Woohoo! A video is coming soon where we discuss the series, actually. Yes, and yeah, it was good. Um, book 12, purely because of an insanely cool scene and battle scene um, with Egwene in it, so would yeah. recommend. And Do it's the first one that Sanderson wrote as well. Mm -hmm. It's pretty, yeah, I think that it's maybe my favourite book that Sanderson wrote in the Wheel of Time. It's just, it's very riveting, very epic, and yeah. It's good. It's very, very epic. Yep, so number five. On fourth spot for me is The Jade Setters of Jan Loon by Fonda Lee, one of my favourite authors. This is a short novella. It's basically a prequel to the Greenburn saga. So if you read the Greenburn saga, then this is a must read. I was absolutely amazed how engaged I was by a 140 page novella. I mean, finally, she just knows how to write characters and it felt so wonderful to be back in this world. And, and we also get a bit of insight into some of the world building dynamics and the like a especially a smaller clan that we don't really know much about at all in the Greenbone Saga. And based in this book, this small clan basically is a whole story. So I thought that was really fascinating. And also one of my favorite characters also makes an appearance in this one. So really, if you are a Greenbone Saga fan, don't miss this novella. It is brilliant and I read it in one sitting, gave it 5 out of 5 stars, one of the best novellas I've ever read. Okay, book number 4 um, is another Wheel of Time, because that's almost all <laughs> that I've been reading. Um, so book 13, so I really liked book 13 over the last book, um, I think because this sort of builds up to sort of the final battle, that's not a spoiler alert, mm. they're always talking about the final battle from the very first book, so I really enjoyed book 13 because it sort of built up a lot of stuff and it kind of put things into line and preparation for the final battle but still had quite good sort of character development and really cool character moments so this is my book four yeah the last three books in the world time are epic so yeah definitely worth reading the series just to experience those books and read all the series just to experience the last three or two books <laughs> <laughs> all right and on third spot for me is a book that i literally finished a couple of days ago and that is Call of the Bone Ships by R.J. Barker, which is book two in the Tide Child trilogy. Um, we've been reading this trilogy on my Discord server, and we I recently finished book two. And I know a lot of people say that the Bone Ships, I mean, even I would have said, it's a series that has quite a steep learning curve, because you're just thrown into this world, a lot of the language is very, very weird, and R.J. Barker doesn't really explain what the different words mean. And also this world is just so, so different from anything I've ever experienced before. But I think that The Bone Ships, which is the first book behind me, it's a good book. But basically this book is a step up in basically every aspect you can imagine. The pacing is better, you have more great character moments, the world building is expanded, and there were just so many great and epic character moments in this book. So this series does not have a middle book syndrome. I would actually be surprised if book three is able to be even better. I'm expecting this to be my favorite book in the series. and. I know a lot of people joke about I always talk about sprayed edges, but these sprayed, sprayed edges are very, very cool. <laughs> Just gotta add that in there. So yeah, if you're looking for something different, then the Thai Child trilogy will definitely be very different from anything you read, probably. Book three. It's a really short title. 
The hundred year old man who climbed out the window and disappeared. Sorry, I had to read it as I said it because it's so long and I don't remember. They even added an international bestseller sensation because you need more text on there. So many words. Um, I really enjoy this. So it, it is a bit, at the very start, it feels a bit slow paced, I thought, which probably says a lot because I, I don't usually mind slow pace. Took a little while to get into it. But once I got into it, it's just such a bizarre, fun book. It's just so weird. Like, it's almost like if a child started telling you a story and they just kind of forgot what they were saying halfway through and just made stuff up. Like, it's it's so funny. And it kind of gave me like um, a children's book feel, like almost like Roald Dahl telling you a story, but not quite Roald Dahl still. But it was still very, very wholesome. And I just thought like the characters were really fun and um, interesting. Yeah, I mean, there's not much like world building or anything. Like this is... <laughs> Set in our this world. is set in our world and they're traveling to different places and it's really weird and there's also like it's in our world but there's some made up characters who are associated to real people i just thought it was fun so probably a good palette cleanser yeah if that's what you want or just a cozy little read and on second place i had to include the queen of fantasy robin hobb with fool's errand which is book one in the tournament trilogy so this is actually my favorite book in the whole trilogy i read the whole trilogy this year and I really think that this is Robin, some of Robin Hobb's finest character work to date. I mean, Fitz. He is without a doubt one of the greatest characters I've ever come across in fantasy. So if you enjoy the Farseer trilogy, I mean, you will almost find everything you love with the Farseer trilogy in this world. And in typical Robin Hobb manner, the prose is beautiful, it's very, very slow paced. And this book will give you lots of heartaches because Fitz, he just won't catch a break. I mean, there's so many sad character moments here, but... So yeah, the Tournament Trilogy, I don't think it's my favorite trilogy in the series, but it's definitely worth a read, especially if you enjoyed the first two trilogies in the series. The Girl in the Tower. <laughs> so this is the second book to uh, the Bear and the Nightingale series. Mm. Yeah, no, I really liked it. I felt like this was almost like its own book. Like I felt the Bear and the Nightingale kind of ended almost like an, just an independent story in itself. Mm. And then, but this continued and there's some like progression definitely, like cause you got the characters and the same world, but it kind of like the story envelops even further in a way that almost makes it feel like an individual sort of, yeah, I just really enjoyed this one. And I also just like folklore and sort of fairy tale sort of themes. And there's a lot of that in here. And I love it if it's like a, like a culture or a nation that I just don't know much about. That's yeah. when I find it really, really interesting. So yeah. Really, really like this one, based in Russia. And definitely one I should check out, I think. I'll yeah. probably enjoy it, I think. All right, and my favorite read of the year so far is probably not a big surprise to anyone who's watching my channel, but that is The Wall of Storms by Ken Liu. I mean, this book, I've said it before, but it basically takes all the things that were great with the first book, The Grace of Kings, and just improves upon them in almost every way. The scale is bigger, the character moments are way, way better, the analysis of themes is epic, and the world, I mean, it truly, truly expands. And I'm just amazed by the ambitiousness of writing a story like this. I don't know how many years just even this book takes place over, and I'm currently reading the book three, The Well Throne, and just the scope is insane. So if you find political fantasy fascinating, you're looking for something refreshing, and you enjoy fantastical creatures in your fantasy, then this is definitely a series for you. And yeah, it just blends almost everything that I love in fantasy into one series, and it's just absolutely brilliant, and it's just so, so refreshing. I think Ken Liu, he is a genius, and I have to read everything else he's written outside of the Dandelion Dynasty after I finish the series. What a statement. What a good compliment. Right, book number one for me is... One of my favourite books as well. Mm -hmm. I <laughs> recently went to watch a theatre production of it. The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. Read this really recently. So basically we found out that the theatre production was happening here uh, where we live. We mm. thought it wasn't and then it was. And basically I was like, let's go. And I was like, I need to read the book. And so I read this quite quickly. She read it in three hours. <laughs> <laughs> this one looks thicker because it's got like less text on each page and it's got like illustrations in it. Very beautiful. I just really enjoyed like the themes in this. Mm. Um, and I think maybe I enjoyed it more because we went and watched the theater production the next evening. Yeah. So, and I just liked a lot of like the references, like there's a reference to Narnia. Yeah, and also location like the accents are mentioned in here, which were also done in the theatre production. 
So I thought this was really, really cool. It's like a fairy tale for adults, basically. It's, it's very whimsical, yeah. but it's also dark. And yeah, I think it gives similar vibes as Narnia, but it's written for adults and yeah. it's quite dark. So yeah, it's a brilliant standalone. And if you can, and if you want to read this, definitely like pick up the illustrated edition. Like there's so many beautiful illustrations in, in this book. All right, so these are our favorite reads of the year so far. Who do you think has better reading taste? Definitely let us know in the comments down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end. I hope you enjoyed this video and got some inspiration to read more books. Now, if you want to support me in any way, then you can check out my Patreon. I have different tiers and you will get different benefits depending on what tier you support. Some of the benefits include getting your name in my videos, voting rights on my next feed, getting a special role on my Discord server, getting access to one Patreon exclusive video a month, or even art cards and bookmarks signed by my wife and me. Most of the money goes to hiring an editor to do a couple of videos for me a month, which basically allows me to post high quality content more frequently. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and God bless.